So far we've compared the Amazon Kindle Scribe against things that it could really compete with in an overall size form factor. But this is the biggest Kindle ever made and actually surpasses that of the 9.7 DX. Now there is a segment of eNotes that exist in the 13.3 inch category. So today we're going to put the Kindle Scribe 10.2 inch up against the Quaderno. Now there's something that needs to be said about these units. For example, first thing is that on the Amazon Kindle, this is an e-reader with a library, with a bookstore, with millions of books and you can sideload files in here, you can put manga on here, you can put regular e-books and do sticky notes and a whole lot of things on this. You can go on the web browser. This is an e-note and that's all it is. This is the Quaderno aka the Sony DPT RP1 except this is the second gen and if you've noticed we've used the same pen on both of these because this actually has the Wacom enabled screen so we can use the Amazon pen on both of these and to be honest the Quaderno Gen 2 pen isn't spectacular and they use the exact same tips so this is going to be an accurate depiction so although we cannot do ebooks on the Quaderno because it can only do PDFs as you can see every single file format is PDF we can at least look at something like a manga next to each other so this is a manga on the Quaderno 13.3 and you can see that it doesn't format itself completely amazingly compared to the Amazon because this will be content purchased and downloaded from the Amazon store it's going to be perfectly formatted every single time now there is a downside to the Amazon is that when you use the pen it just thinks it's a capacitive touch you can't take notes on manga however on the Quaderno you totally can you can take notes using multiple pens as well and we'll show you this in the note taking section so whether you have a PDF ebook a PDF manga PDF whatever as long as it's PDF format you actually get the exact same palette up top on any single type of PDF whether it's text-based or just blank whereas on the Amazon it's going to be different based on what you put on here there's another thing if you sideload in PDFs on this unit you can't take notes even though it's the same file you need to use the send to Kindle website if you use the send to Kindle website the toolbar will be on your left and you can start taking all the notes you want on this unit now you can because this runs PDF look at PDF so we're going to open the exact same Beckett baseball right here and we'll go to the first page just to see how these two stack up against each other now there's a huge difference here because this is a 13.3 you get way more screen. Look how much more screen you get. However, this has a far greater pixel density. This is in the 200s, this is 300 PPI. So the pixel density is going to look better on this. You do have some ways to change the contrast on the Amazon. You can go over here to more and there will be some here. If you side load, it'll be different than if you don't side load it. So you'll get different kind of ways and configurations based on how you put it in here. But you can take notes on both of them all the same. The amount of screen real estate you get on this is staggering. It is huge, even compared to a 10 inch, which all things considered is not that much of a disparity for big screens. You can just see if we line the bottoms up here, how much more space you're missing out on on an Amazon. But that's not what the Amazon's about. The Amazon is about being an ebook reader with a note taking tool. So we're not going to look at PDFs because we have PDF experiences on both of these units. What we're going to do now is create a new notebook on both of these so that it is completely fair. Create a new notebook and we'll create a new notebook here. We'll do blank portrait on both of these and we'll create one right there. We, we will have some background templates on this and you do have background templates on this as as well so you can actually do that and the Quaderno actually allows you to put in multiple templates from their own website which yes you can put on the Amazon as well now this is the biggest thing why you would want the Quaderno the writing feel it is unparalleled to this very day 2022 going on 2017 whenever this came out it's unreal The Amazon is not bad, but it has far less grit 
it is far more slippery on this but this has a great level of actual retention for the pen it's very sticky not sticky like with some sort of syrup substance but sticky as in you're writing on what feels like a very high grit sandpaper this just doesn't have it 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 definitely does just slip out of your hands more so on the Amazon than it does on the Quaderno. The reason being, this has a glass screen layer with a layer of anti-glare screen protectant. Now, they said it's supposed to give you a, a paper-like feel. It does in a little bit compared to an iPad and compared to an LCD phone, sure. But compared to things like the Remarkable One and the Likebook Mima, you can hear this thing from a mile away, this thing feels like you're writing on a piece of paper on a marble tabletop. It is quite spectacular. And to be honest, the features on both of these are pretty similar. They honestly don't have that much features compared to other devices. In fact, something similar these both share is that you can use the pen and press and hold the button to make different styles of writing so I can use the highlighter and the pen without ever touching the side you can do the same thing on the quaderno I can use the pen or I can make a smaller line and that's not just a smaller line on the quaderno you can actually choose and map two different pens I can choose a black paintbrush right there and I can choose a red pencil or whatever I want and there's multiple colors on the quaderno as well you get black blue red and white and it will actually be different colors based on what you are choosing for example the highlighter has yellow and when you export that it's going to be yellow so we can go like that and we can change pens on the fly and this is something that only the quaderno can do in fact creating different pens only two units can do that right now the quaderno and the onyx books devices you can also choose the line thicknesses and this does have pressure sensitivity as well you can collapse the toolbar and you can go over here to click more to be completely honest, the Quaderno has limited functionality compared to a lot of things, but quite a bit more than the Amazon. You even have two-page spread, which allows you to split this into a two-page spread. Now, it's not going to fit on camera, of course, but you get the idea. Not only that, you can go a step further with this and display documents side by side. And what this actually does is separates the entire UI into two sides. So I can have my baseball PDF open on this side, use it autonomously like that, and I can still take notes on this side. If I go over here to my pen, choose a pen other than white would be a good example, choose a black pen, I can make my notes here, and I can make my notes here. As you can see that not only that you don't have to have a notepad it can be anything so I can have my one piece manga open on this side and my baseball PDF on this side and I can take notes on both of them this split OS and two page spread and display documents side by side is not exclusive to this unit but the Kindle can't do it and I kind of feel like they've missed a little bit of an opportunity there because the Amazon is so capable it would have been great to have an ebook on one side and the note taking experience on the other side why we're showing the Quaderno more is because there's nothing else you can do on this you have the pen which doesn't even have that great pressure sensitivity if I do small lines or I do a thick line the difference isn't very drastic then you have your highlighter which is your highlighter, which is just the pen, and you have the eraser, which you can use the back of the eraser. This is a pointer, which doesn't really do a whole lot, except prevents fingerprints on your unit because it just acts as you tapping the screen with your fingers. And outside of that, you just have undo and redo and move the palette over to the other side. There is something really cool you can do with the Kindle in that after you've drawn something, you can press share and quick email it to anybody. You do not need to sign up with email servers. You do not need to set up any protocols you just simply put someone's email in and it sends it it's quite spectacular whereas on the quaderno you do have to use the application to do a lot of things but honestly you're not bound by it you can sideload documents into here you can do software updates directly on the unit so it is autonomous to that point you also get a scheduling app which allows you to sideload in schedule PDFs and these are interactable so I can click on the actual elements and dive into them but funnily enough if we go over to the scribe this can do 
do it too, which is a little bit of a surprise. The same Fujitsu scheduler PDF that we got from this and put on this, you can do the same thing. If I wanted to go to June, if I wanted to go to April and I want to click on a date, I can do that with my fingertip, click on a date, and then after I'm in it, I can do my notes. Same thing on the Quaderno. I can go to August 6th and take my notes. I'm obviously using a white pen, which is a terrible example, but you get the idea. So they do have that shared all things considered. However, the Amazon just lags a little behind when it comes to the note taking section. And we're not entirely sure why. They have designated one of the four things at the bottom to be notebooks. They have their own pen, two pens in fact, they have the basic pen and the premium pen. Why they did not expand outside of this little palette here, any additional features this is a little bit strange. Whereas the Quaderno is and is only a note taking tablet. They don't have any ebooks. They don't have any inherent manga or a store or a web browser on it. So it's a little bit of a mixed bag, both of these guys. This is an e-note through and through. This is an ebook reader that has a note taking section and a little bit of an experience, but not all that much. There's not a whole lot of things you can do on it. It really is just going to come down to what you want your unit to do, but you also have to take into consideration the screen size. This is going to be significantly bigger. In fact, you can split this in half and to have effectively two 8 inch diagonal units strapped together. So that plays into it a lot. Also, this is significantly more expensive, but you get a two year warranty with this and the one year warranty with that and all these things come into play. And yes, they both use the exact same pen. So no worries there. This has been a comparison between the Amazon Kindle Scribe and the Gen 2 Fujitsu Quaderno.